In 2001, De Beers was searching for diamonds in Canada's far north. What they found led to an estimated $120 billion discovery. The Ring of Fire is many things to many people. It's got a huge potential, but I stress the word opportunity and potential because the Ring of Fire is not yet a reality. It's just a name for what is there under the ground and what could be if it's properly developed. We need to focus on industries that generate good, high-paying jobs, and the mining sector has the best-paying jobs. So how important is this? It's incredibly important. Seven years have passed since the discovery of the Ring of Fire. Premier, how many more years have to pass before you actually do anything? But why, a decade after its discovery, has not one ounce left the ground? I hope to learn why by speaking with all sides involved. Right now, the Ring of Fire is subject to a high degree of scrutiny at the First Nation community level, as well as environmentalists are, are looking at this project and, and asking questions. How do you feel about assurances that mining companies are like, oh no, this time we got it? <laughs> well, <laughs> we love our land and our water and our environment. We want to keep it that way. Everybody's concerned about the Ring of Fire. What's going to happen? It's us as an Anishinaabe, where do we stand and what are we going to do for ourselves too? That's my question. People worldwide are watching the stage. How will resource development get done in remote regions in places like Canada with environmental concerns and First Nations concerns going forward? In layman's terms, we've just pissed everybody off and they're still pissed. <laughs> but we're, we're going to win. Because that's what he said. I know he said it in his interview because he says it publicly all the time. I'm about to leave for China. They are building railroads everywhere else in the world. There's no reason they can't build one to the Ring of Fire. Are you optimistic? Very. Extremely.